Pursuant to House Resolution 1300, the gentleman from Florida, Mr. Grayson, and a member opposed, each will control five minutes. The chair now recognizes the gentleman from Florida. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I want to also express my thanks to the chairman of the Armed Services Committee, the members of the committee, and the staff, and specifically and especially to Congressman Andrews and Congressman Conaway, who have brought this bill to the floor and allowed this to be considered for amendments. And I also want to express my thanks to the members of the Rules Committee and to that staff for finding this amendment in order for consideration today. Uh, this is an amendment, in short, that gives guidance uh, to contracting officers that they never had before in DOD uh, concerning uh, the question of to what extent cost or price should be considered in procurement. And I ask for the support uh, of the Grayson Amendment to the IMPROVE Act uh, to give legislative guidance to the Defense Department concerning the need to emphasize price or cost in defense procurement. Under current law, the DOD contracting officer could be a GS-8, GS-9, um, has no authority, uh, has no guidance from this institution to determine how much should be considered for cost or price. Rather, the contracting officer, on his or her own volition, establishes an evaluation scheme before each procurement, telling the offerors how their proposal will be evaluated. Current law permits DOD to announce an evaluation scheme that would consider price or cost as only 1 percent of the evaluation and other more subjective factors as 99 percent of the evaluation scheme. In practice, price or cost frequently is weighed as only 25 percent or 33 percent of the evaluation scheme and other more subjective factors remaining in the balance. The resulting waste is twofold. First, DOD frequently rejects the low-cost proposal because its own evaluation scheme dictates that it does so. This alone costs the taxpayers untold billions of dollars. Secondly, defense contractors who know how to build a better mousetrap that could actually save DOD substantial amounts of money don't even bother to frame their proposals that way because they know that the evaluation will not turn on cost, but rather will turn on factors other than cost, so they don't even submit such a proposal. Our amendment solves these problems by mandating that DOD procurements weigh cost or price at 50 percent of the evaluation scheme or more unless the head of the agency decides otherwise. For large purchases of standard commodity like fuels, hammers, etc., there's no reason not to do this. And for items that are mission critical, the head of the agency under our amendment has the discretion to weigh cost or price at less than 50 percent, in fact, to weigh it at any amount that the head of the agency deems appropriate. In my 20 years in government contracts procurement before I was elected to serve in Congress, including my time spent fighting war profiteers in Iraq, I saw substantial overuse of subjective factors in DOD contractor awards at taxpayer expense. Our amendment is a common sense solution to that problem, which will allow all of us to say at the end of the day that we fought hard to fight against waste, fraud, and abuse in defense procurement. I, I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman reserves, the gentleman from New Jersey. Mr. Chairman, I, I rise to claim the time in opposition to the amendment. I do not oppose the amendment. Without objection, the gentleman is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'd like to thank my, friend from, my friends from Florida, Mr. Grayson and Mr. Hastings, for offering this amendment. Um, it, it makes eminently good sense. It says this. If a procurement officer decides to buy the product that isn't the least expensive, a couple of rules apply. First of all, Price has to be at least equal to the greatest factor that's being used. Can't be any less than equal. And if it is less than equal, the procurement officer has to explain why. Now, this makes pretty good sense. I think most people would agree that it's not always true that the least expensive item is the best. But if you think, it's, if you think a more expensive item is the best, then you ought to explain why. I think most of us would want that. Uh, in the way we manage our household budgets, or our businesses, or towns, or local school districts. Mr. Grayson, based upon his years of experience in this field, has written an amendment that carries that idea forward. I think it's very worthy. Again, I think it strikes the right balance between flexibility for the procurement officer to make a decision that he or she thinks is the right one, but justification to the public as to why we're not spending the least amount of money on something that we're buying. I think most of our constituents would want us to presume, would want us to presume that we should get the best price available. And only if it can be demonstrated that the best price available is not the best value available should we make a different decision. So I think this amendment makes very, very good sense. 
I would urge uh, its adoption and reserve the balance of time in opposition. The gentleman reserves. Uh, excuse me. Uh, before I reserve, if I could, I'd like to yield to my friend from Pennsylvania, Mr. Platts, as much time as he would consume. The gentleman is recognized. The gentleman from Pennsylvania. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate the gentleman yielding. Um, I certainly rise uh, in agreement over the maker of the amendment uh, that we need to get the best value from the American taxpayers when it comes to the acquisition of goods and services. Um, in fact, the underlying bill we're discussing here today is about achieving that exact goal, getting that best value. Um, I do want to express a concern, however, that sometimes getting the best value may mean paying more for a superior product or service, especially when it comes to the complex technological requirements of the equipment of our men and women in the American Armed Forces. There may be legitimate cases where the cost, or the price of a good or service is less important than other factors. And probably a good example of that is uh, pretty recently the acquisition of MRAPs and body armor that certainly have saved lives of our courageous troops. Um, a concern that I think we need to weigh here is just that this may be a little premature, this specific amendment, because a similar amendment was included in the 2010 National Defense Authorization Act. Uh, during the conference, a provision was added to that amendment, to that language, that requires the Government Accountability Office to do a study to determine how often this occurs when cost is not an uh, overriding factor or the primary factor. Uh, that study is due back to us in October of this year. And it seems like it would be um, appropriate to get that knowledge base from GAO before going further with another requirement um, uh, at this time. So uh, don't oppose the intent of the uh, sponsor of the amendment. Uh, we certainly are in agreement that we want to get the best value, but just believe it may be help, uh, helpful to wait for GAO to complete its work. So with that, I yield back to the gentleman. The gentleman yields back. The gentleman from Florida. I reclaim the balance of my time, and I thank my colleague for making these points, and I'd like to respond to them briefly. With regard to the first point, I want to make it clear that within the literal wording of this amendment, no agency is ever required to choose the least cost product. Uh, all that this amendment does is says that in the evaluation scheme, in order to encourage people who are offerors to think about how to save money for DOD, we make the commitment in general, overall, that cost or price will be considered at least as much as all the other factors combined. In addition to that, we allow the head of the agency to suspend that rule at will, without any condition or limitation in the statute. The head of the agency can determine that for any item, including mission critical items, uh, cost or price can be 40 percent, 30 percent, 10 percent, even 5 percent of the evaluation factors. So I, I think that uh, although the gentleman's point is well taken that we should not ever bind the hands of the DOD when DOD needs to get items that may not be the low-cost item. This is an amendment that does not do that. This amendment simply says that when, in general, uh, under ordinary circumstances, particularly in buying volume commodities that are identical to each other, uh, we should, in fact, make 50% uh, of the consideration cost or price. Now, I've seen procurements where, for instance, um, a commodity like uh, gasoline is being bought by DOD. And somehow they determine that two-thirds of the evaluation factor should be something other than cost or price. Sometimes we waste billions of dollars on account of decisions like that. So I think that this is a rule that really needs to take place. I understand the gentleman's point concerning the study that's ongoing. But frankly, I think that if we do this now, we'll save money now. If we do this later, we'll save less money. And I'd rather see the money saved now, particularly when we have such great needs abroad and our defense budget um, is so great. I think that this... This simple rule, this common sense rule, will help to save billions almost immediately as soon as it's implemented. I thank the gentleman for his comments. Does the gentleman yield back? The gentleman yes, the, yes, I, I, I reserve the balance of my time. Thank the you. gentleman reserves. The gentleman from New Jersey? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I would defer until the author of the amendment would finish his argument.